Hi, Mary. How are you today? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. Um, since I saw you last, we went over some of your information, um, your basic information. I just want to clarify that with you, make sure that it's correct in your file. Um, it says that you, your name, your legal name is Mary Smith, and your age is 59. Right. Um, it says for your gender that you're female, and what would you like to be preferred? What pronoun would you like to be preferred by? Do you have a preference? Female pronouns are fine. Okay, sounds good. And then in regards to your spiritual beliefs, um, I don't know if I saw that in your file or if we went over that last time. I just consider myself a believer. Okay. 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 Sounds good. Um, what are some cultural values that I should be aware of um, that are important to you um, so that I can respect you and honor um, those values in our sessions? Well, I'd say the thing that comes to mind is my age. Um, I find as people get older, sometimes they are put to the side or not respected as much because mm -hmm. people think that they lack skills or intelligence. I don't feel that you're doing that, but that for people my age, that's something I've noticed that happens. People sometimes think that people are more feeble-minded when they get older, and that isn't necessarily true. It just has, takes longer to do things sometimes. Exactly. We still have plenty of wisdom to give our world. Um, and then the last question in terms of your basic information is just about your home environment. Um, what type of uh, home do you live in and who lives with you? I'm married uh, to my husband and we have three cats. Oh, that sounds fun. You love your cats then. They're great companions. They are. I can see from your cat earrings. <laughs> Uh, cats, yes. All right, so now that we got got through some of that basic information, um, what really brings you in today? Well, since I saw you last time, um, one of my parents has been diagnosed with a terminal illness. Oh, yeah. That, so that's been a changer for me. Yeah, that's really intense. It's not something light to take. <laughs> um, so what has been... What has been something that has been getting you through that currently? Any, any um, techniques to treat yourself and calm yourself through, through this new um, change? Well, I try to, um, let me see, try to get enough sleep and, and I started walking in August, so I still try and keep that going. That's good. Try not to work too much, um, trying to make sure they get to their appointments. Know, things get situated that way it's been a big change for them and uh, they're still able to get to their appointments each of them but uh, it's just more stress on their relationship and so I feel more of a um, a parenting role than being their child mm. I feel like I need to make sure they're okay and that's that's expected as you're their daughter and um that protective factor. Um, in your in your family, are you the oldest or the youngest? You're the oldest. Oldest only daughter. And being the oldest, you know, you feel like you have that burden of taking care of your family. Um, on a on a scale of one to ten, where is your where's your stress level at right now with that? Well, I think right now it's probably about a three. It's not terrible not terrible um, okay. it's just I could see things in the future that might change that but it's just been um, an awareness of their mortality which is my mortality which is you know changing dynamics and things like that so if anything it's not as much stress as it is um, roles and you know uh, Just realizing that my parents aren't going to be here forever. Yeah, the um, the finality of that and them being gone is pretty intense. Mm -hmm. I can see that you're experiencing a lot of a lot of intense emotions and feelings, and it's not going to be an easy transition in your life. Getting used to taking care of your family and um, are you retired? Are you working? No, I still work. Um, my brothers are still. We're all working still work so it's balancing that too exactly and then the balance with the other siblings and 
trying to um, take care of yourself and them. It's, um, I mean, I've certainly seen that with other people. You just know, people don't think it's going to happen to them. They just think it happens to other people. Mm. Other people get sick. Other people's parents get sick. Other people have problems. But everybody does have problems. But the thing that everybody does certainly experience is decline and, and death. And we all see all of that. So it's. My parents have spiritual beliefs. I'm not worried about the spiritual side of things. It's just okay. the whole um, realization that things are about to change in my family. It's and um, the cancer is the diagnosis. They are probably looking at hospice care. Mm. So it's something that's pretty significant right now. Yeah. Are you comfortable with the hospice care? Is that something that you've been looking at? I have, I have understanding of hospice care, so I feel comfortable with it. It's just, you know, it always applies to other people instead of your family. Yeah, you and never thought it would be you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, they, they're going to go get some more tests next week, but then probably make a decision about hospice, and okay. they may have to... Move. I have. They haven't decided. So there's that transition as well. And um, I don't know if they're gonna, they're probably gonna sell their house and maybe go into an assisted living or we'll see. So there's a lot going on. Okay. So yes, taking care of them is not something that you've had on your radar. It's more of um, because you need that separation from work, not having them living in your own home. Well, that they never asked about that. Okay. Um, that was. Most of the time, um, parents want to stay independent of their kids as much as they can. Not for any reason, but just that's what they're used to. So I think they want to try that first, Cause since, especially since we work and we're not home. Mm -hmm. and, but they, they have the ability to sell their home and get something that will work for them. So, and they certainly can still make their decisions, so we're just letting them guide us that we're in the periphery trying to figure out when we're going to be needed. Okay, sounds good. So who are some of your supports um, through this? Who's um, Who are you leaning on to help? Well, my husband, and then okay. I have my kids, and, and certainly my nieces and nephew, and um, family friends and things like that. So a lot of people in, in my age, you get where this is more common than not, so you have that shared experience but it still feels isolating when you go through it because it's pertaining just to you and your family, even yeah. if other people have gone through it. Exactly. Well, that's really great that you have a strong um, relationship with your husband for him to be there um, through this rough time because you can't do it alone. No. I'm smart enough to know that. <laughs> and you have your cats. And I have cats. <laughs> so that's good. Another um, thing to go over is just um, what's a uh, just calming and stress technique that you found to help reduce reduce your stress and anxiety well, through this this time. The walks are good in the morning. I try not to listen to anything on the radio <laughs> ever and uh, have some quiet in my day. That I find many people like music and sounds and such. I need quiet. I just okay. need it to be quiet. And that helps. It just kind of gets centered from being quiet. Mm. Sit quietly sometimes. That's good. Sometimes we just need to be away from all the noise. And the walking will be great for you too because it's bilateral movements. Um, because when you're moving your feet both one at a time, it's allowing your brain to go with it as well. And the signals that are going up to it um, are going to help distract you and keep you focused on, on the thing that you need to be in that moment instead of thinking about. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. Thank you for telling me that. You're welcome. Today, before we leave the, um, or at the end of the session, I'm going to have you just fill out uh, the an SRS. It's a session rating scale. Okay. Um, just to allow me to see how our session went and so that we can have more progress in the future um, with our session. Good. That sounds like a good idea. Awesome. Well, I hope your week goes well and that uh, some of the techniques we've talked about um, soothe you and calm you through this transition. I look forward to talking with you again.
Have a great day, Mary. You too.